My name is Devereaux Lloyd, and I am going to be speaking to you today on the topic of integrative multidimensional leadership. And I'm putting forth that integrative multidimensional leadership is a more effective model for ministry leadership, and it is useful both in Christian education and in other uh, areas of ministry. I believe that this is something that, although it's a mouthful of words, that uh, we can distill it down into something that is very meaningful to you, uh, very clear to understand. Um, if we look at the picture of, say, all of us are, uh, as Jesus said, fishers of men is what he desires us to be. He's making us to be fishers of men. And we're trying to think of a more um, beneficial way of fishing. Are we going to uh, fish with, you think I can go out there with my hands and, and try to catch a fish? And that might work. It might not. But, uh, it works for some. But is there a better way? And so we discover the use of a fishing uh, pole. We get a fishing line, a hook, uh, and we add some bait on there. Uh, it makes it more attractive and, and uh, we can be uh, more effective in our efforts to catch fish. Uh, but, you know, using the fishing line is something that many anglers do uh, to this day because it works. Uh, but is there a better way? And those that are um, commercial fishermen, they've realized that, hey, uh, the fishing line, uh, that's only going to get me basically one fish. But if I use a fishing net, hello, uh, I can catch much more fish. Uh, and so it's a more effective way of doing the work. And so with ministry, I believe that there are more effective methods that we can utilize to help us to be successful and to be effective in the work that we do. Again, whether it is in Christian education or in some other uh, ministry of the church or these principles that I'm going to be sharing are also good in uh, organizations. So part of organizational leadership is uh, um, I'll be bringing some of that into this discussion today or my presentation to you uh, because these things also apply in those realms. Um, and as far as the conceptual framework, again, that's kind of a, a big moniker, but we're looking at the basic ideas and the foundational principles that I'm going to utilize to, uh, to prove what I'm talking about, uh, this integrative, multidimensional leadership. All right. And so I, uh, number one, I'm sharing that uh, working with a team is more beneficial. It's more productive than individual effort. I think that we can having um, multiple people that are putting their shoulder to the wheel, to the wheel. Now, when we uh, talk about uh, integrative, um, the root of it is like to, to integrate. And so we're bringing together and with like a fabric, it is woven together, not just one strand or one fishing line, but we are bringing multiple things, multiple elements together to do the work of one. So it's as a team an interconnectedness uh, the, versus the power of a single strand uh, of a fishing line. We see there's a big difference when we have a fabric uh, like a, um, a fishing net that's all together. No holes in it, but it's all together. And it's working to do one thing, it's to catch the fish, to bring them in uh, versus the fishing line. And so which one is more effective? And the Bible talks about a threefold cord that it is not easily broken. So again, there is a stark difference between fishing with a fishing pole and one line versus a fishing net. Uh, and secondarily, uh, integrative. When we look at the word I just mentioned moments ago, integrative means uh, that we can work together and we will work together in the same way that a team integrates for one purpose, for one goal. So integrative meaning integrate or integral. And we use words uh, like integrate uh, in our daily language and then something that's kind of opposite to that, which is clearly seen, disintegrate. When something disintegrates, it, it breaks apart into nothing. And so the opposite of that is to integrate, we bring it together. And when we say integral, we're talking about something that's vital to the entity. It cannot exist without this. It is integral. And so we have an interconnectedness 
that we exhibit in our leadership with our team, with those that are responsible to us. We lean on one another because we are interconnected, not abiding individually, not just in a, 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 a conglomeration, a group, but a team. There's a vast difference, not just in the same place at the same time, but in the same place at the same time for the same purpose. All work together to accomplish that self-same goal. Amen. And so I believe the Lord wants us to be together, to work together, to do things together, relying on one another, and it will help us to do the job better. Number three, our third item here is a team member is not required. Again, this is a tenet. This is a basic understanding that I'm uh, putting forth is necessary for integrative multidimensional leadership. Okay. A team member is not required to know the role uh, or the functions of other team members. Now, you say, well, but they need to know. No, that's not the job. It's like the job of your hand. Your hand is part of the body, uh, right? It is connected. It is integral. It is, you can't just take off your hand at night. It is part of the body. It has specific functions. It abides with the body. Not alone, it can't survive, right? It has to be connected. Uh, but the hand doesn't know what the brain is doing or what the ear is doing. It doesn't have that function. It doesn't have that role. And it's not worried about what things sound like. It has its particular set of functions that it's supposed to do as part of the body. All right? So it is not a requirement uh, for other for team members to know the roles, the functions, the responsibilities of other team members. Now, I can mention, uh, now I'm going to talk about that a little bit later, but if a team member knows about the roles and responsibilities, the functions of other team members, well, then that's a blessing. It's not a burden. It's a blessing because then we can start talking about multidimensionality, not singular in dimension in its purpose, in its function, in its role, but now it can do others. It can help others. It can assist. And there are parts of the body that help other parts of the body. That's their role. Amen. All right. So number four, the function of each team member may differ vastly from another team members. But remember, each member is significant. Each member is significant. Now, as humans, we like to ascribe uh, levels of importance and value and responsibility because that's just how we are. It's our human nature. But when we look at each part of our team, each part of the body as important, uh, I think that we're going to see things differently. Now, can you abide without a hand? Sure. Can you abide without an eye? Sure. You don't want to. You don't need to. You shouldn't because that's just not the way that things are meant to be. It's meant to be whole all together. And that's what God wants. Um, but when we say, okay, to uh, I know the Bible tells us to have all things done decently and in order. And so we ascribe or we assign hierarchical structures. You know, you're at the top, you're at the bottom, so to speak, okay? And so when someone's at the top, we look at that as being more important than one who's at the bottom. Does it really have to be that way? Or can it be that the one who's at the top is simply the one who is giving the directive for the team, but he has the same importance as a team member? Think about that for a moment. Now, the Lord allowed us to be leaders, but the example that he gave to us was as a servant leader, right? The way up is down. You want to be the leader? You want to be the boss? Okay, be the what? Servant of all. And so embracing that servant. Now, when we think of the servant, we typically don't think of the person who is the most important right? The one who's getting preeminence and priority. But that is what God is wanting us to embrace, this, this understanding of being a servant leader. So that is not the one, although maybe sitting at the top of the hierarchical structure in our group and our uh, team and our organization, but it does not mean that they are more important than the other members. Let that sink in, okay? And then we have that that understanding and that mentality, when we embrace that, that uh, type of leadership, servant leadership, being the servant while I lead, that causes us to embrace humility, right? God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. 
And so that, I believe, embracing humility is going to allow me to be a more efficient leader. I don't want to be resisted by God, but embraced by God, that God pulls me close and draws me close and that I'm not just anointed, but that I am blessed by God because I am doing uh, things that are pleasing to Him, walking in His ways. I've embraced His ways. I'm exhibiting His ways in my life. And I believe that His ways are going to uh, be in alignment with this. I believe that this actually is in alignment with His ways. We are uh, uh, showing integrative, multi-dimensional leadership, embracing one another. Luke chapter 22 and verse number 5 says, The Gentiles, uh, they like to uh, exercise lordship. I'm the boss, applesauce. Okay, but he said that should not be that way among us. And I pray that that would sink into our hearts and so that we don't walk out with hot, uh, haughtiness, um, being heady or high minded, uh, proud. You know, I'm all good all by myself because no man is an island. We don't abide alone. We don't live to ourselves and die to ourselves, but we are an integrated fabric all together. Amen. How God wants us to be. All right. And then number five, multidimensional. What does this mean? Well, first of all, it means working in different areas and departments and ministries. Like I mentioned, I alluded to just a little bit earlier, some of the team members might understand not just one role, but the role and responsibility, the functions of another team member. So they're not just singular in their dimensionality. They're, they're multi or bidimensional. In this case, if they know the role of one other, but if they understand the roles of others, several others, then they can be multi-dimensional. And some of these people that you have on your team, and they are key. Uh, they really help out, and so uh, not that they're more important, but they add more value to the team. So this is something that is a blessing. It is good. All right. Uh, and then letter B is roles. Uh, multi-dimensional means roles having differing levels of complexity. Uh, some roles are easy. Easier to do, not that they're easy, but easier, and some are uh, more um, involved, more complex, more moving parts, and not simply just maybe, um, you know, mopping the floor. Uh, it might not be as difficult as counseling with someone that takes a bit more uh, skill, uh, uh, more time, more labor, more training uh, to be able to take care of that. And so uh, that's when I'm using the term multidimensional. These are some of the things that are involved in this terminology. And then the sixth concept or portion of this framework is some team member roles are more complex than others. So this is based upon what was just said, referring to complexity. Now, although their role and responsibility is more complex than another's role that they have or their responsibilities, uh, each one of the team members is providing for the welfare of the whole team. I'll pause and say, amen. This is true. All right. A less visible role does not mean less important. Think on that. Just because they're not seen enough front doesn't mean it's not important. Okay. How many times have you seen your heart? It's not very visible at all. But I would venture to say your heart is very important. It plays a vital role in our existence. And so, again, less visible does not mean less important. And then a less complex. A less complex role does not mean less important. A less complex, just because, you know, the one is not sitting with, um, you know, 15 degrees and the letters behind their name doesn't mean that they're less important. The role might not be as complex, but the role is part of the overall goals and functions and responsibility of the team. And so each has this importance that we need to work together to be integrated as a team all together. All right. Um, and then this concept here about tearing down, we, it's, we can be critical of others that perhaps don't have the same level of understanding. They're not the same level of growth and maturity that we are at. And so words can be easily uh, tossed out that can injure, that can tear down. It is so easy to tear down, but what? You know it's so much harder to build up. Any person with a hammer or sledgehammer or a wrecking ball can tear something down, you know, to rip up something, rip up a piece of paper. But it takes 
time when we are going to build. It takes care. It takes skill. It takes understanding to build up. And it is easier when we are working together. When you think of utilizing, again, the analogy we used earlier, earlier about the fishing line versing versus the the uh, the fishing net and we look at that and the differences that are there um, it's rather easy to stick one line out there but to to make a net it took some time it took some skill and so we have as a result something that can be very beneficial to us in our job that we're doing of fishing all right let me move on to this point here. The benefits of working together outweigh the benefits of working alone. In Deuteronomy chapter uh, 32 and verse number 20, it speaks of one chasing a thousand and two putting 10,000 to flight. And that's talking about the power of a team. The power of a team. One puts a thousand to flight, but two, 10,000. Um, wow, something happened there. Okay. So uh, speaking about the integration, coming together, and then God is able to allow a dynamic to come into existence to be able to bless his people in the work of the ministry. And I skipped over a point here uh, that uh, good leaders, good leaders realize that the mission is too great to be accomplished by one person. And, and I'll say that again. The good leaders realize that the mission is too great to be accomplished by simply one person. When we think about what Jesus did. He didn't send out the disciples by themselves, but he sent them uh, to, he sent them out by twos. He chose disciples. He didn't try to do it himself, and he sent them out by twos. Um, we should be able to train and trust those that we lead that are on our team. This is what God wants. So we're not doing this alone like the fishing line, but we are integrating others, team members, to join us in the work. Again, not that somebody is more important than another, uh, but we are all working together to accomplish that self-same goal. So uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse number 12 says, And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not easily broken. That's talking about the power of interconnectedness, all coming together, talking about unity, right? Haven't said that many times in here, but you've probably been thinking about that. Unity. We come together and do the job as one, one team in one accord. Acts chapter 2, they were all in one accord. And look at what the Lord did. Matthew chapter 18 and verse number 19. Says, Again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. It was talking about coming together. Two, if two of you, if two of you will agree. All right? Each of you, you all have something to offer. You have something that is good. You've demonstrated faithfulness over the years and uh, your time in ministry. And I believe that God would really desire for each of us to be able to go from good to great. And so when we embrace principles that can help us and that can build and that can do a better job, I believe that this can be well-pleasing in the sight of the Lord. And I believe this is a principle that he uses. He talks about uh, uh, the he's called us, he's ordained us to bring forth fruit and that our fruit should remain. And then from there, even though we're bringing forth fruit, you know, he's going to work on us, right? So that we can do what? Bring forth more fruit. So he's looking for more benefit, something to be more uh, effective, more efficient. And so when we adapt different types of leadership principles into our lives, it allows us to be more effective. Uh, you can have a bike with one gear, a cruiser, just goes along only at one speed. But if you have several gears on that, a three speed, a five speed, a 10 speed, a 21 speed, 
multiple gears to help you to go through different terrains at different speeds. So it's more effective for that purpose of riding and going along. And so I believe that we can understand the more complex things by the simpler things, by these little pictures that help us to understand and see they're all working together because God wants us to bless Him. It's not about us. It's about Him. It's about His people. It's about His kingdom. Uh, Vince Lombardi, he was a, uh, a great uh, coach in the NFL. He said, the achievements of an organization are the results of the combined efforts of each individual. The combined efforts all coming together. All coming together. Uh, Andrew Carnegie, um, he stated that teamwork is the ability to work together toward a common vision. The ability to direct individual accomplishments towards organizational objectives. It is a fuel that allows common people to attain uncommon results. The ability to work together. God help us. And so that we don't try to abide alone or I got this and I can do this all by myself. Maybe you can. I don't doubt that. You're awesome. You can. However, is there a better way? I believe that there is. Patrick uh, Lencioni, who's a um, well-known writer of books on team management, he stated that, remember, teamwork begins by building trust. And the only way to do that is to overcome our need for invulnerability. Wow. Wow. So you mean I need to be vulnerable? Well, it'll help. It'll help. When people see that, then they recognize, hey, you need me, or I can help. So they feel needed, and then now we can build that trust and work together to accomplish that goal in a greater way. Uh, Jesus is recorded in Matthew chapter 12, and verse 25. It, it has, uh, knowing their thoughts, Jesus told them, every kingdom divided against itself is headed for destruction. Or, and no city or house divided against itself will stand. That's from the Christian Standard Bible. No city or house divided against itself will stand. When it's divided against itself, we're talking about disintegration. Disintegration. It breaks up when we divide. But when we come together, nothing shall be restrained. God wants to bless. Come together, that's indicative of unity. So we can think again of the fishing line uh, versus the power of the integrated fishing net. So much more powerful. Talking about interconnectedness. Interconnectedness. I'm going to move on because there's not much time left, but Kuzis and, and Posner, two uh, professors, uh, they both teach at Santa Clara University and also in their um, business, uh, in the Levy School of Business over there. And they've written uh, many, many things over the years on leadership. Uh, wow, they're, they're, they've got some great works. And um, one thing that uh, they stated in one of the publications is that good leaders realize that the mission is too great to be accomplished by one person. Isn't that something? Now, not just talking about in the organi organizational realm, in the organizational sector, the public sector, but in the, biz in, the, in the church realm, in the church sector, good leaders realize that the mission, the mission is too great to be accomplished by one person. Um, then going on here, the biblical precedent, the work is too heavy for you. You cannot handle it alone. Select capable people and have them serve. Who was this? This was Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, talking to him about what he was doing. What are you doing to the people? You're handling this all by yourself. This is not good. There is a better way. Uh, let me move on here to, uh, that was, uh, yes, in Exodus chapter 18 and verse number 14. Uh, also, an example from Scripture showing the benefits of sharing the leadership load. We saw what happens when we try to do it alone, uh, that example there. But the apostles in uh, Acts chapter 14 and verse number 23, uh, they, the Bible tells us that they ordained or appointed elders in every church. They weren't trying to do all the work by themselves, but they appointed leaders to share the load, part of the team. They were needed and we need others to help us to share that load. It is scriptural. There is a need to trust those that are on the team. 
Effective organizations are built upon leaders that trust the workers that are with them on that team. That was uh, stated by Steve Colby in The Power of Trust. Um, we have to learn to put the same trust in other people that we put in ourselves and then release them to do the work. I believe that's stated on page 89, Power of Trust. It is such a very, uh, it's a simple principle, but sometimes so difficult for us to do because we feel that we can do it, right? And again, I'm sure you can, but is there a better way? And I believe that there is. Uh, I mentioned also about the servant's heart. Uh, this speaks to the quality of the net, not just a net, not just a leader, but what kind of net? What kind of leader? A leader that has a servant's heart, uh, leading out of a servant's heart, not selfish leading because that's short-sighted. We're also looking for the successor. We're thinking about succession. When I can't do this, then who will after me? Something happens to me, I need to be replaced. Who's going to be there? Uh, whose leadership pattern are we following? Are we following something that is pleasing to the Lord or a leadership pattern that is pleasing to self or a leadership pattern that my friends are doing? Well, I heard that they, that they were doing this. What is pleasing to the Lord? Let's follow after that way. Uh, what pattern, what path are we making? Where are we going? And then uh, finally, giving our power away. Think of how you can develop others. How can you pour yourself into them? Develop a radar for developing the ability to see the gifts and talents in others. And then enable them. Allow them to go ahead and do that job. You know, they're not going to do it like you, but give them a chance to start. Give them a chance to fail. Give them a chance to grow. Fan their giftings. Fan their gifts into flames and watch them do a great work for God. And then make heroes of them. Recognize them and the great work that they are doing. Public, publicize it. Let others know, hey, you believe in this person. This one is doing a great job. And we're going to see a greater result, a greater harvest. Again, we've been talking about integrative, multidimensional leadership approach. Integrating, bringing people together who have differing levels of talents and abilities. Some who have a singular talent, singularly uh, dimensional. Others have multiple abilities. They are multi-dimensional. And we're bringing them all together to do a greater work, just like that fishing net. Great quality, a great work. In Jesus' name, let's pray. Father, we thank you for what you're doing and for the words that have been brought forth today. I pray that it would be like precious seed going into each heart and that it would bring forth bountifully. I thank you for what you're doing in our lives and allowing our leadership to grow. We give you the glory, the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and thank you for listening.